Good morning to the Honorable Ministers of the Council, members of the media, online viewers, radio listeners via St. Martin Girl Radio 107.9 FM, and respective radio stations island-wide. I'm Rolaika Roach, and welcome to the Live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, March 18, 2020. Based on the adaptation of the social distancing, the, the Council of Ministers press briefing will be split in two parts. At this time, I invite the Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport, and Telecommunication, the Honorable Melissa Arundel Doncher, to address you. Good morning, fellow ministers, invited press, and the listening public. To begin with, I would like to inform you that the Inspectorate of, Inspectorate of the Ministry of TIAC has controlled, has continued its control and enforcement activities at retailers across the country to ensure adherence to the established maximum prices on items in connection with COVID-19. During the controls on Saturday, March 14, 2020, several supermarkets were controlled and violations in connection with this legis legislation were discovered and fines were issued to the retailers. Controls will continue to ensure compliance with the law. The ministry is calling on the assistance and the vigilance of the public to monitor the latest retail maximum prices of goods on the list and report or file an official complaint with the inspectorate of the Ministry of TIAD in the event there are any violations. This, the ministry will investigate thereafter. The latest maximum price list can be found on the government website for the items, description, size, and price. Businesses who fail to adhere to the established maximum prices risk imprisonment up to four years or a maximum fine of 10,000 guilders in accordance with Article 8 of the Price Ordinance. As a preventative measure, the Ministry has taken the initiative to put a halt on certain businesses, operations that are considered as non-essential and essential. This also you can view on the government's website. I would like to emphasize, though, a few of the non-essential businesses educational institutes, daycare centers, early childhood development institutes, schools, universities, training facilities, in retail goods, retail stores such as clothing, jewelry, souvenirs, sales outlets and shopping centers, vending stalls at the Phillipsburg market, food and beverage, there's no dining and loitering, bars, roadside vendors, whereas takeout and delivery services are allowed, bakeries, restaurants, included in those at hotels. Recreational activities, casinos, standalone and hotel base, nightclubs and other dance establishments, adult entertainment, art galleries, and other exhibition halls. The cinema, business offering recreational activities, such as zip lining, boat trips, quads, etc gyms and other indoor and outdoor sports activities, museums, hair and nail salons, barbershops, meeting and events, conference facilities, outdoor establishment, and that accommodates events. Given our current domestic situation and the drastic economic measures that become necessary to curb the contracting and the spread of COVID-19, as, as the ministry responsible for monitoring the economy and its developments, an economic analysis was conducted. This analysis is quite important, considering the global developments, especially within the markets of the United States and Europe, for which St. Martin depends highly on its economic stability. In our initial findings, our analysis indicates that this situation continues on its current trend, especially in the tourism sector. Our economy will decline substantially for this year. Our cruise passenger arrival is projected to decline by 20% for this year. Likewise, our stayover arrival. 
A 20% decrease in cruise arrivals for 2020 means that there will be 326,307 less cruise visitors coming to the island. Taking the assumption that an average, a cruise tourist has an average daily expenditure of $150. This would result in a potential loss of reg revenue in the sum of approximately $48.9 million. It should be noted that with this already known, known calculation of 52 calls that was announced on March 13th, this would result in a loss of 150,000 visitors with potential revenue loss of $22.5 million in our economy. A 20% decrease in stay over tourism for the year 2020 means that there will be 64,000 less visitors coming to the island. Taking the assumption that on average stay over visitor, stay over tourist stays seven and a half days on St. Martin, the effect is a total decrease of 480,000 in tourist nights. Additionally, with the assumption that a stay over tourist spends an average of $160 on a daily basis, this would result in a potential loss revenue in the sum of 76.8 million. With the economic stimulation, it is projected that there will be a decrease of 32% in the number of tourist days for 2020. Since tourism is a significant part of the export product, averaging 72% annually, it would be negatively affected and will decrease 20.6%. In addition, import will decrease as well as 11.1%. And since export decreases more than import, there will be a negative effect on our foreign reserves. At the end of 2019, our initial GDP, real gross domestic pr product, was projected at 3.5% economic growth for this year. However, with the ongoing situation based on our, analys our analysis thus far, this initial growth will see a decrease of 9.7% this year. It should be noted that our tourism revenues directly and indirectly account for approximately 85% of our GDP on an annual basis. If there's a decline within the overall tourism sector, indeed a blow to our economy will happen. This decline will inevitably have a rippling effect on our business community, household sector, as it relates to the employment and dampering performance on our fiscal sector. This is just a synopsis of our pre preliminary evaluation of the economy at this time. Further in-depth assessment will be conducted and shared with interested parties, stakeholders, to guide our decisions going forward. Thus far, the Ministry of TIAT has consulted with COSI, Chamber of Commerce, and SHTA. I would like to take this opportunity to inform the general public that although most of our ongoing activities and events in the Ministry of TIAT is presently involved with falls within the operation of the EOC, for which Prime Minister reports on, that the interest uh, that the interests of well-being of our citizens and the business community, a number of stakeholders were and are engaged in the ministry. From these meetings, collaborations, initiatives, actions, and programs have been formulated to deal with our current situation and cushioning of the aforementioned impact analysis. To this effect, the same would be communicated in a timely manner with the general public. I would also at this point in time like to commend our Prime Minister, our EOC, and, and the other ministers for all the information they have given to the public on behalf of ourselves. If you have any more questions or anything else, feel free to answer, to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Arundel Doncher, for your opening remarks. At this time, I invite the Minister of Justice, the Honorable Egbert Duran, to address you.
Thank you, Ms. Roach. Good morning to you, to my honorable colleagues, members of the media, and the people of St. Martin on a whole. In order to help mitigate the spread of COVID-19 virus, several precautionary measures has been taken within the various departments of the justice, injustice. These measures were taken in the interest of the public order, peace and security to safeguard the health of the general public and the civil servants that fall under these ministries. The common court of justice only will be handling urgent cases. No public is allowed in these cases. The press is welcome, provided they meet the health criteria. The public is advised to go in, to the counter only, only for urgent matters, and all other matters should be addressed via telephone or email. In regards to the Point Blanche Prison, House of Detention, and Miss Lally Center, all visits to the inmates will be halted and alternatives will be put in place for inmates to be able to communicate with their relatives and their legal representatives. All non-urgent emergency visits will also be halted at this time. For more information, please contact the House of Detention. In regards to Immigration and Border Protection Services, no new permits will be issued at this time until further notice. This entails event permits, resident permits, landing permits, visa waivers, etc. Permits that have already been issued for scheduled events are hereby revoked with immediate re effect. Requests for extension of stay will be handled by appointments only. The travel ban announced by the Prime Minister is in full effect for the residents of St. Martin that are allowed and that is in full effect. Residents of St. Martin are allowed entry. A medical questionnaire is to be completed by these persons. In regards to the operation of businesses, it is decided that all non-essential businesses have to remain closed. Among them, restaurants, bars, with the exclusion of hotel bars and restaurants. Restaurants, pubs are hereby to operate only on a takeaway and delivery basis. As previously mentioned, these precautionary measures are in effort to help mitigate the exposure of the subsequently spreading the COVID-19 virus. The police will enforce these measures on a basis of zero tolerance. All instructions issued by police for executing and enforcing these measures should be strictly and immediately respected. Our police force is working in the interest of the public health and safety, and as such, the general public is advised to follow these orders. Non-compliance with these measures will be in violation of the general police ordinance and the penal code. A sanction policy will also be issued by the Public Prosecutor Office in regards to this zero tolerance policy. This sanction will be published at a later date. I wish all my people the best during, these during this difficult period. I would also like to suggest a way f to be found, especially for the elderly and the vulnerable, to be able to get their groceries and medication delivered to their homes. This causes less people to be on the road, less traffic, and less chances of contracting the virus. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank all the staff within the Justice Ministry for their dedicated commitment and the hard work during these difficult times. Um, God bless the people of St. Martin, and I look forward to any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Duran, for your opening remarks. At this time, I invite the Minister of Public Housing, Spatial Planning, Environment, and Infrastructure, the Honorable Christopher Waver, to address you. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Good morning to my colleague ministers, members of the media, and a special good morning to the people of St. Martin. I would like to start off by um, commending the hard work that's been done thus far by the AUC members, um, the chairperson, the Honorable Prime Minister, Severia Jacobs, for all the hard work that she's put in during this difficult time and with the decision making that's taking place. Um, as it pertains to the Ministry of Romi, I would just like to reiterate that the garbage collection, roadside cleaning, um, pickup of sewage is all business as usual, of course, with keeping in mind the social distancing aspect of it. Construction companies are also allowed to um, continue with their construction. I think this is, if you're looking at um, kind of a silver lining, that now all these hotels, all the hotels that have been um, in delay with building up 
and building back better after the hurricane, have the opportunity to do that as well with um, not having any tourists at the moment. So we can take advantage of that aspect. I think um, the public must be aware. I'd like to also state that please keep in mind to always check the real sources and make sure to go on to the government website for all the real information out there before spreading other information. Do your research, make sure to know the facts before spreading it. And when you do um, decide to share certain information, do your back check and, and decide for yourself as a public, is this worth sharing to the rest of the public? Um, false news travels, unfortunately, faster than the real news. So we need to make sure that we switch that behavior, and especially in these times where the correct information can help save lives. Um, as the Ministry of Romi, I have also requested all departments to send me a list as to their plan as um, how everybody can work from home. I suggest the general public to also do that within their businesses to be able to keep as much persons out on the road and in their house as possible. And together we can fight and together we will pass this as well. And I know this is a strong country, so I have nothing but faith that we will also come through this above all. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Wavert, for your opening remarks. If you've just joined us, you are watching the live Council of Ministers press briefing. We now move on to the question and answer session. Given the current situation, we will have two rounds of questions. Dimitri Whitfield of the Daily Herald, you have the floor. Hi, so good morning to the people of St. Martin and to the ministers who are here present. Um, my first question is to um, the TIAT minister. My, uh, you painted a quite grim picture of the economic effects of the coronavirus that will um, occur throughout the rest of the year. Um, I would like to know if there are any, um, if there are any economic stimulus packages that are in discussion, especially to protect businesses and to help revive businesses, um, and persons who are likely to be unemployed. Um, if so, um, can you elaborate further on these plans, and um, where would the funds for these plans come from? Thank you, Dimitri, for your question. Um, in reference to economic stimulus, the Ministry of TIAT is working with Finance Department, Minister of Finance, in regards to any stimulus plan that we have jointly or economically that we can um, assist the community with. So once the minister arrives, you can readdress the question to him. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Arundel Doncher. Stephen Cerulean of PJD2 Radio, you have the floor. My question is, thank you, Mr. Roach, for the Minister of TIAT. Um, in connection with the very same question my colleague asked, um, the picture you po um, painted is very worrying, um, Minister. Is there any way that you're able to provide information as to where you stand as far as the discussion with your fellow colleagues um, are at this time in terms of being able to better address the situation as it pertains to the economic effect this might have on the entire country. Thank you. It is a reality. It is a grim picture, as Mr. Dimitri has mentioned, but this is our reality here in St. Martin that we're facing economically and what will transpire within the next few months. Um, as I mentioned, speaking to SHTA and Chamber of Commerce, um, they've also had, we've also had um, discussion with the Bankers Associ Association, whereas we're still in the process, which should be finished shortly, to, to, to give the community the information on what exactly we're working on to assist the country in, as we go through this um, process, I should call it. And it's not only a situation that St. Martin alone is facing, but also the whole entire world. 
It's a, it's a learning curve as well as we go along day to day, minute to minute. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Arundel Doncher. Lyndon Brown of BCN TV, you have the floor. Good morning to the people of St. Martin and to the ministers that are present here today. There is hope. And my question will be to the, the minister of, of Romy. And they're going to start with the word crisis. So I hope the, the people of St. Martin would understand the word. Check it out and see what's the meaning, crisis. Now, uh, minister, the health aspect of the garbage hauler, um, did you present um, precaution to them, like um, um, in the area of gloves, um, special suit, because they are doing a um, dangerous job? And like the disposal of um, garbage from the hospital and the, the International School of Medicine, um, what is the plan? Do you plan to uh, burn these, um, this garbage? Um, what do you have in plan? Thank you for your question, Mr. Brown. I do believe that all these garbage collectors, all these companies are all professionals and I'm sure that they are taking the necessary precautions to ensure that they don't put themselves or their uh, workers in danger. So yes, they are and they should be at all times, regardless if it's a crisis situation or not, take the necessary precautions. When it comes to the garbage of the, or the, the waste from the, the hospital, that is already in place from way before, so the same would apply and continue. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Waver. We now move on to the second round of questions. Dimitri, you have the floor. Yeah, my um, second question is for the Minister of Justice. Um, you spoke about the measures against the non-essential business closures and that there will be a zero tolerance policy. Um, I also want to extend this question to the measure against large gatherings. Um, how will this measure be enforced? Um, and for both the measure against large gatherings and for non-essential businesses, um, will there be fines given out for infractions, as in the case of the French side? Because we've heard a lot um, in the recent days about harmonization between the French side and the Dutch side on the measures um, implemented against the spread of COVID-19. Thank you for your question, Dimitri. Um, in regards to the sanctions, I mentioned that the Public Prosecutor Office are now busy drafting a uh, list of sanctions with um, a similarly done when it's carnival time in terms of different violations and so forth. So we're still awaiting that. It hasn't been published as yet. And in regards to the, the large gatherings, I believe um, the PM was very clear in regards to discouraging the, last, the large gatherings and more details will follow with that soon in the coming days. Can Thank I you, Minister Duran. You may, yes, you may ask a follow-up. So then it's correct that fines are likely to be given out for these infractions? Definitely. Definitely. And it will, it will be published in the coming days. Thank you, Minister Duran. Stephen Cerulean, you have the floor. Ms. Roach, thanks. My question is for the Justice Minister. Mr. You made mention of the measures currently being taken, especially at the Point Blanche Prison. You're saying that visitors are not allowed at this time. Um, how many prisoners are currently housed at the Point Blanche Prison and what is being done to ensure their safety in case of an outbreak of the virus in the prison? Thank you for your question, Stephen. Um, last count, it was in the range of right under 80, but every day sometimes it changes, so I'm not too sure, but it's on the eight, around the 80. In regards to what is being done, I. Last week, I asked every department within the Ministry of Justice to give a, a, a plan as to the measures they are taking. So from the, every single department, Court of Guardianship, the prison, the police, customs, and, et cetera, and those of the police and immigration, and also the IND and the prison are, of course, more extensive. Um, that's the reason I want to, I give the instruction to stop the visits because we cannot control it. And also the guards are also taking precautionary measures in terms of the general hygiene. And we are looking for a, a sort of a digital way to organize the communication between the, the inmates and their families and their lawyers as well. And that will be published, I believe, by the end of this week. And then they will know the way forward. And 
any information, they can contact the prison directly and get the exact information. I wouldn't like to make that public right now. All right, thank you. Thank you, Minister Duran. Lyndon Brown, you have the floor. Question to the Minister of Tourism. Minister of Tourism, um, countries around us and also St. Martin take this um, coronavirus very serious. Um, the Prime Minister said that there are some, well, um, countries around St. Martin, which is from Curioso, say, Station Sabre, St. Kitts, Nevis, they can still come to St. Martin. While there are some countries that ac actually stop uh, yachts and cruise ships from coming to their port, uh, what is St. Martin's stand on that, on that conversation? As the mm -hmm. Prime Minister has mentioned, we have stopped yachts, boats, um, all those type of port entries in coming into St. Martin. So they're not coming in anymore. So we have also curtailed our um, incoming um, tourists where that's concerned. But um, the traffic from Station Sabre, St. Kitts, according to what the Prime Minister said, they are not stopped. Sabre, so, Sabre um, and Station are part of our commune. So the, the transportation via Winnea has continued. Via Winnea. Thank you, Minister Arundel Doncher. If you just joined us, you are watching the live Council of Ministers press briefing. We will be right back. Please stay tuned. Every day at the Civil Registry Department, we are confronted with at least one customer who did not pay attention to the expiration date of their passport, such as the Lockhart's. To avoid this from happening to you and your family, we urge you to check the validity of your passport. If your passport is about to expire, please follow these simple steps to make an appointment. Visit appointments.stmartingov.org and follow the easy steps. All applicants must apply in person, last issued Dutch passport, two recent photos taken within six months, minors must be present with legal guardians, fee for adults 210 gillers, fee for minors 150 gillers, additional information can be requested, four weeks processing time. Your identity is your responsibility. You ever hear Earthquake call and say, Hello, Mr. Mara, it's me. Earthquake are coming in Tuesday around 10. No, sir. Earthquake does arrive unannounced and when it comes, it'll shake all the sense and the sensibility out of we. Remain calm, stay inside and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Once the shaking start and you know it's an earthquake, make a quick move to a safe place. Don't run to the door at any exit and the stairs that may be broke up are even full of people. Elevator, avoid that because you might get in and then poof, power gone. And you're stuck in a box with Air. Take cover under a strong table or a bed, or crouch against an inside wall or inner corner and cover your face and your head with your arms. Remember, DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Glass windows and doors, outside walls in an earthquake, that is bad news. Take care yourself. Most injuries during earthquakes happen when something drops and hit people entering or exiting a building. Last thing, don't bother and outside and ask, you feel it? You feel it? Remain calm, stay indoors until all the shaking stop and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. This public service this announcement was brought to you by Sedima and the government of St. Martin. Hi, my name is Ayana Duran and I attend the St. Martin Academy High School. This month, we learn about single-use plastic and how it negatively affects the environment. Did you know that human beings consume about 250 grams of plastic per year? To learn more about single-use plastic and how you can do your part, let's all help reduce, reuse and recycle. So St. Martin can be plastic-free by 2023. Every day at the Civil Registry Department, we are confronted with at least one customer who did not pay attention to the expiration date of their passport, such as the Lockhart's. 
To avoid this from happening to you and your family, we urge you to check the validity of your passport. If your passport is about to expire, please follow these simple steps to make an appointment. Visit appointments.stmartingo.org and follow the easy steps. All applicants must apply in person, last issued Dutch passport, two recent photos taken within six months, minors must be present with legal guardians, Fee for adults, 210 gillers. Fee for minors, 150 gillers. Additional information can be requested. Four weeks processing time. Your identity is your responsibility. Welcome back to the live Council of Ministers press briefing. Thank you for joining us. At this time, I invite the Minister of Finance and Acting Minister of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, the Honorable Artwell Edion to address you. Good morning, Council of Ministers, media, and the people of St. Martin. I have to keep my um, tea close by because I have to clear my throat and I'm kind of nervous to do that on camera. <laughs> Everything we do before a, a pandemic will seem alarmist. Everything we do after will seem inadequate. But M, leave it. I think this is a telling and a fitting quote. I would like the population to know that every decision that we take is taken with the best interest of the general population in mind and with the current data and evidence at that moment, which is deemed the best decision. When we look at some of the largest economies or countries in the world that we respect, the French government initially were going to continue with their elections. With new data and information, a new decision was made. The Netherlands at one point in time were gonna have a shutdown, a lockdown. With new evidence and data, they decided to go with less stricter measures. One of the greatest economies in the world, the US, initially decided that they need the testing case, they will do their own. Today, they, t they, they think different. I said this to say this. Every decision will not be perfect. Every decision will not satisfy everyone, but every decision is taken with the best interest of this population in mind. It should also be noted that we are a 16 square mile nation that also depends on data and information from professionals around the world. This is a disaster that we have never had to deal with on this scale before. It isn't a hurricane, it isn't an earthquake. As new data and evidence becomes available, we might and possibly have to at times change certain decisions, but I consider this responsible governing. Our Prime Minister and the EOC have been putting in close to 12 hour shifts a day to ensure our safety. It is easy to lead in a time of economic prosperity, but I believe that true leadership is shown in a time of crisis. It isn't a time to incite fear for personal ego or even political gain. During a crisis, we need our media to be ethical, our citizens to be responsible, our community to be understand, our understanding, and an island-wide compassion for our people. The Ministry of Finance has been in discussions with different with our different colleagues in the Ministry of TIAT, the Netherlands, the Bankers Association, and the relevant business stakeholders, including the IMF and World Bank, on solutions for an economic impact stimulus package or plan. I will be, I will be blunt. We will have trying times. It may be a bit painful at times, but more than ever, I believe we will again see through the, I believe that more than ever now, we will again see the true definition of what St. Martin Strong means. Resiliency and a strong-minded people. And we will get through this. And that'll be all. Thank you, Minister Edion, for your opening remarks. 
At this time, I invite the Minister of Public Health, Social Development, and Labor, the Honorable Pamela Gordon Carty, to address you. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Good morning, PM and um, colleague ministers and the media, to all listeners at home following us through the different media. The Ministry of ESA has the following announcements for the public. Labor Department is implementing social distancing downstairs by having seating arrangements done, meaning one seating is free between each other seat. You can see with sticker which of the seat is designated either to sit on or not to sit. The Labor Department also, we are hereby, through the Labor Department, we are also informing the public that the work permit section has and will be closed as of tomorrow. No permits will be granted until further notice. Also, we want to inform those that have got the cards that fall under social services that has an expiration date within 13 days, 30 days, that one, those cards, they will be extended with another 30 days. I had a meeting with um, all department heads on Monday and all of them were instructed to look within their department itself to see which one of the functions can be carried out home. So all department heads will be looking within their department who can work from home and also at the same time take care of their children. Because of the situation with the school, the schools and daycare are being closed, it's creating a very challenging situation for our economy as a whole within the business sector. We want to hereby, on another note, inform the parents that still have to report to work to make sure that your children are in a safe environment. Ministry of ESA will be running some reports on social impact and on label to see what measures and or policies we need to work on in order to guarantee a smooth transition back into normal. We had also our first meeting on Monday with the Council of Public Health, and we met with the new members, which are very enthusiastic about getting to work. Discussions were held, and my request was brought forward for the Council to look in the three following topics. I would like to receive an advice when it comes to SFV, also the SMMC and the big registration. The big registration is important for our ministry because it will guarantee that all our medical practitioners are on a high level and that we are receiving the best possible candidates within and on our country. All businesses are informed to contact the labor affairs making any decisions in regards to their employees, especially when it comes, when it comes to requests for dismissal, requests for reduction in hours, and or business closure. To our food delivery services, we would like to announce them that food inspections will continue and even be reinforced during this time as we want to guarantee that non-expired foods are not being sold to our public. We want to ask all employers to be flexible and reasonable and not to use this pandemic situation to abuse our employees. Permit the employees to be home and take care of the children, especially those that don't have nowhere like family members or trustworthy persons to leave their children at. And since parents are required to stay home in some instances, we also urge the public 
as a whole to continue applying social distancing and proper hygiene. We also want to recommend to pay attention on boosting your immune system, as this is important to fight off this COVID-19. I'm sure that everybody wants to keep barbecue home and do gathering to release stress, but just bear in mind that the situation requires for us to stay, for us to stay basically aware of what is the reason why we are home. To the businesses, we also want to inform them, since the situation will be um, not in our control, to take into account to have business interruption insurance in place, as this will be important and it can save businesses from going bankrupt or putting themselves in a predicament financially. To our public, we want to say, and to our media, we want to say, do not contribute to the panic to our public by posting information that are not official. And um, let's just stay focused that as together as a whole, we have to contribute into maintaining the peace and that the country can come out of the situation without any stress, additional stress added to it. So from my end, I will say as a public min as the Minister of Poli Public Health, let's just stay focused and maintaining our health in the higher way possible. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Gordon Carty, for your opening remarks. At this time, I invite the Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs, the Honorable Silvera Jacobs, to address you. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Good morning to my colleagues here on the panel and those who have been before, to the members of the media present, all those hardworking persons behind the cameras of DCOM, and those following this broadcast. As I have yesterday updated, um, both in an address as well as with a press conference of the EOC, as to the latest uh, updates where COVID-19 are concerned, I can say that to, at this moment that there are no new updates where that is concerned. We are basically at the same level as yesterday, the same, only one patient, and we continue to monitor. I would like to, however, update uh, with the Flights at the airports, I know you may have asked the Minister of Tiad already, um, our immigration officers, um, the decision we have taken to not allow any uh, visitors at all at the moment, not from the region either, but only allow flights to come in that are taking passengers who had tickets or who had reservations and had arrived in the past couple of weeks out of St. Martin. We're also allowing passengers who um, transited through St. Martin to the surrounding islands, Seba, Stacia, Anguilla, and St. Bart, to be able to come to St. Martin to catch those flights. So those flights will be continuing throughout the day and hopefully up until Sunday, after which we hope that we can then update to say that no more visitors and or St. Martiners will be allowed to come in so that we can really say that we have contained our borders um, for the two-week period while we assess and address any possible further um, positive cases to ensure that we can maintain them and keep them under our limit. I would, however, like to update the general public that as the Minister Vesa mentioned before me, um, the government administration as part of the EOC have taken several uh, measures to ensure that as a critical and essential service that the general public is not hampered. So while you may see today, thankfully, not a large crowd of persons um, waiting for service, as far as two days ago, they started a dry run at the civil registry and finance sections on the right, especially where it's much more crowded, to ensure that the social distancing 
would start to become a part of our normal behavior during this period. Uh, many people, I realize, and I've heard of some horror stories in supermarkets, for instance, where some aware citizens have been asking their fellow citizens who are standing a bit too close to remember to distance ourselves for our own protection and have been cursed out royally. Um, this is not, you know, this is not a measure that anyone can enforce on you in terms of arrest you if you do not keep a distance. But for the comfort of others and for the safety of others, we understand that so far, we cannot say we have proven or disproven that it cannot be transferred by casual contact. Our previous cases that had passed through, um, let's say, Bobby's Marina to the airport have in the meantime recovered. It has been now Friday coming will be exactly three weeks since that occurred, and we have not found anyone who have been in contact with those persons at the airport, at Bobby's Marina, in the shuttle that took them to the airport. None of the immigration officers have since then been contacted or contacted CPS or been positive for COVID-19. So in at least that, we can be assured that on our island, casual contact has not allowed you to have the disease or have the virus. Um, so far, around the world, we are seeing it is being imported. So that is the main reason we are trying to stop the import of the virus, especially understanding that we have a minimal capacity. We have been taking many, many measures and made requests for um, the ability or to have the ability to expand our capacity to handle severe cases. But around the world, the first step that each person must take is to self-isolate. I want to reiterate self-isolation because some people may not understand what that means. If you are requested to self-isolate or mandated to self-isolate, you should remain at home. You should make arrangements with either family members or friends to do your errands for you. Um, this is the only way to ensure this could be that you have been in an area where the COVID-19 was a bit rampant, and especially all persons coming back to the island, especially from the last week up until now, we are asking you, please, if you have not yet started, please self-isolate. Stay at home already now. Other businesses are closed, schools are closed, so it is even easier for us now to all adapt to the fact that we should stay as much as possible at home. Only essential and necessary movements should be made. So if you need to pay a bill or if you need to um, shop for groceries, get medication, visit the doctor, physical therapy, those types of activities are allowed. Um, we have posted last night the list, and I know there was a discrepancy, however, I believe it has been fixed. Um, it will be double-checked and checked again, and of course, if there are any discrepancies, it will be updated. If we notice that it is, for instance, difficult to monitor and or police a certain area where we have allowed to remain open, then that area will end up having to be closed. What businesses and institutions who are allowed to be open should do is prepare some type of plan where you can minimize the number of persons within your organization, as much as possible utilize appointments and even deliveries, if can be. Then you minimize the contact between your um, business and the outside world while still being able to carry out some kind of business. Um, it's a two-week shutdown that we have planned, and if it works, we will be able to start to slowly open back up. If it doesn't work and we have a spread, then it may have to be extended. This does not mean, people of St. Martin, that food will not be available. So again, I continue to ask to stop the hoard buying, stop the buying of 20 and 30 of things when someone else does not have one. We have to think about our neighbors. Government of St. Martin is already taking stock through the Ministry of VSA and Community Development to ensure that our most vulnerable will be supplied with care packages. So I am saying this for, to, for you to be able to, if you are not already on social services, 
we have a registry already, you feel that within short, you will be in jeopardy based on the fact that your job is in the tourism sector, your business um, has not already decided how they will handle it, the stimulus plan has not gone into effect as yet, don't wait until you are at the end of your rope. I would suggest you make the call to ensure that we as government can know how many persons will be needy in the short term. Um, for the medium and long term, there are plans in place. And um, in terms of ensuring what I have seen some businesses do, as Winner has done, is offer their employees who are not able to work due to the lesser amount of travel, vacation time. So if you have already paid vacation within your um, contract, then that would be a great first suggestion. Take the next two weeks as vacation that you already do, and then thereafter we will assess how we will be putting the stimulus plans, et cetera, in place. Yes, there will be some assistance for the businesses as well as those persons who need it. So right now at the airport, there is, of course, people still trying to get out. I am encouraging persons, do not go to the airport without a reservation or an arrangement already in place. The airport is also a place where, in a case such as this, you will have large groups of people gathering. We would like that to go as orderly as possible. Pushing and shoving will not help you to get where you're trying to get any faster. For those persons still trying to come in, pay attention to when the airlines put it, they're putting them out via their own websites. So check their sites to, insert, uh, to ascertain when you as residents can come home. And I would like to encourage all those who are in a good position where you are. There is food, there's health services, you are covered medically there, not to attempt to come home where you will then be overburdening St. Martin's system. That is especially for students in the Netherlands who are covered by their insurance and whose living situation has not been jeopardized. For the students who are in the United States of America, especially those who have gone through the study financing department, please contact the study financing division to let them know if you must leave because your campus has closed. They will facilitate then for you to be able to travel home. So those that are Visiting the government building, you will notice that there are lines, they are set up at a distance so that we do not come into excessive contact with each other. And I would like again to encourage that we continue to exercise proper hygiene in all we do, remembering cleaning places that we have touched very often, as often as possible as well. And I wait now any questions from our media representatives. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister, for your opening remarks. Given our time constraints, I will only allow one round of questions. Stephen Cerulean of PJDT Radio, you have the floor. Thank you, Ms. Roach. My question is for Minister Arian. Trying times ahead. The budget is yet to be presented to Parliament. That's the draft budget 2020. Do I take it that amendments will be made to the budget to reflect the current situation that we are now going through? Thank you for your question. I, I think that we can expect uh, amendments that need to be made not only to the 2020 budget, but also to the 2021 budget, which we have already started to work on. Um, obviously, our slow season has officially started which normally starts May, June, has officially started since, I would say, last week. So yes, we can expect that amendments will have to be made. Thank you, Minister Adrian. Lyndon Brown of BCN TV, you have the floor. Question to the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, can you clear the air again? Um, because there are a lot of people giving information which is not um, from the Prime Minister. Um, people mentioned that um, the coronavirus and there are more than one in the hospital and everybody just having their views and um, I assume that media is not about views and my opinion. So tell the, the, the nation, the people of St. Martin, the facts. Thank you, Mr. Brown. If I understand you correct, you would like confirmation on reported cases or confirmed cases? 
Well, let the people know the facts because a lot of people are sharing their own imagination and gossip. So from the Prime Minister, let the public of St. Martin know the truth. Thank you, Mr. Brown, for clarifying. I have yesterday held two, there were two opportunities to, to inform the public, which I clearly stated that we do have one confirmed case, and it is still not completely confirmed because you need two positive confirmations to be able to say that. We've had just one test applied um, confirmed, and so therefore we are waiting the second test to say for sure. However, the person has been confined since being here. He has been properly self-isolated up to this moment. That is still the only case we have. As I mentioned yesterday, and some say that it was a bit confusing, I will slow it down. During the weekend, we started um, using the front side through Guadeloupe to be able to run tests. Um, that is a faster turnaround of the test. And we sent out five samples, numbered one to five. On Monday, late in the evening at night, CPS received the results of which four were negative and one was positive. Thus far, that is all we have. Any other rumor to the contrary is totally false. Um, as soon as that information was brought to uh, myself as a chair of EOC, I was already preparing to explain about the, route, the, the school closures, the restrictions on travel, etc. I delayed the start of that address to be able to add that information in. So thus far, I have been updated up to the moment coming into this press briefing. That is still the only case we have, and we will be able to continue to contain whatever spread from any other person that is out there that may have traveled to the island, been in an area where it's clustered, if they now isolate themselves and call 914. Until we've run tests, that is all we have. Thank you, Prime Minister. Dimitri Whitfield of the Daily Herald, you have the floor. My question is um, to the Prime Minister. Um, you spoke in this press briefing about expanding capacity to handle severe cases. Um, you told Parliament on Monday that um, St. Martin Medical Center has just two respirators in the ICU. Are there plans to get more of this device as it seems to be very critical in treating severe cases of COVID-19, especially among the vulnerable, the elderly, and the immunocompromised? And if so, um, how soon will they be available and how many? Thank you, Dimitri. Yes. Um, as I said in Parliament, there's only two ventilators in our hospital, but we have six isolation possibilities, including those two. So those two plus four other isolation possibilities within St. Martin Medical Center at present. Um, in our discussions with the French side, they have eight, and they don't have any real ICU cap capabilities. They would normally ship out to Guadeloupe if a case requires um, the ICU, so they don't have any either. Um, what we have requested is for three ventilators to be sent via RIVM in the Netherlands. Um, that request has been received. Yesterday we had a Vir London overlay, so a discussion between the four countries uh, pertaining to COVID um, at the ministerial level and um, our request has been received, not only for the ventilators, but I've also mentioned that we have decided to put the pavilion, one of the pavilions that we had post-hurricane Irma, at the close to the St. Martin Medical Center, and within that, we can host six isolation rooms. Um, the three ventilators that we have requested will not go in those isolation rooms, those isolation rooms will be fully equipped, however, but not with ventilators for lesser severe pa uh, patients. Um, the three would be placed within the rooms in the hospital. So then, potentially, we would have then five, and um, that would be then our max capacity when and if they arrive. No timeline as yet as to that. However, what was ascertained is that there is a possibility um, for non-COVID at the moment, transfers, if necessary, medically for acute cases um, via 
um, air ambulance, this, which is currently serving the Dutch Caribbean and stationed in Bonaire. In St. Eustatius, there are also two helicopters, and if necessary, military assistance can be requested as well. So we held uh, discussions to ascertain exactly how within the Dutch Caribbean we would be assisting each other. Thank you, Prime Minister. Honorable Ministers of the Council, members of the media, radio listeners, and online viewers, this brings us to the end of the live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, March 18th, 2020. For rebroadcast, tune in at 7 p.m. on St. Martin Cable TV and via St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9 FM. For video on demand, log on to the official government's website at stmartingov.org. On behalf of the Department of Communication and the government of St. Martin, I'm Rolika Roach and wishing you a pleasant day further.